Welcome survivors to Scavenger Squad, I am Kato Genesis, and this Fallout 4 guide series will focus on quick tips on particular in-game features with the help of a featured guest. Joining me this time is Mr. G, feel free to introduce yourself and tell the lovely Wastrels what you do. Hello Wastrels, this is Mr. G, I run a YouTube channel, Mr. G Rocks, and I write geeky songs, nerdy songs about Fallout, Minecraft, cats, and bacon, and I like Fallout a lot. Pleasure to have you on, Mr. G. The beauty of the colossal crafting system in Fallout 4 is the ability to make nearly anything you want or need to continue surviving, chems, food, and first aid included. In this guide, we will be showing you the chems and meals you can cook up, the ingredients required, and possible spots to find said ingredients. Let's start with the compounds that can be made at the chemistry stations. Drugs, or chems as they're better known in the wasteland, will grant impressive benefits to the player, like raising attributes, damage output, resistance, and even slowing down time. The downside of chem usage is the chance to become addicted and the resulting withdrawal effects. Minus medex and buff out, basic chems like Mentats, Jet, and Psycho can be created with the right raw materials. You can even combine them into hybrids like Psycho Jet, which have more potent effects. To create higher tier chems like Ultra Jet and Overdrive, you'll need the first rank of the chemist perk in the intelligence column. Some of the drugs that you have access to in Fallout 4, uh, you've got your basics, Mentats, Jet, Psycho. One that we feel in particular is pretty great are the Grape Mentats. They will give you a plus 5 boost to Charisma and 10% to your uh, bartering. And another one is uh, Fury, gives you 50% melee damage. It gives you damage resistance of plus 25 and a perception, oh it, it docks you minus 5, no that's plus is that a minus five? It's minus five, yeah. Okay, well, it makes sense when you're totally r raging. When you're when you're strung yeah. out, rage-induced. <laughs> you're strung out, rage-induced. It's like, <laughs> this fury is like an offset of psycho, right? I mean, like, psycho seems like, well, you don't lose any. Like, if, if you have fury, you can combine it with psycho buff, which gives you, if you're a melee user, 75% extra damage, which is crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is crazy. Among the raw components you're gonna need, bags of fertilizer uh, or brominate settlements, uh, makeshift battery, military grade circuit board, cigarette packer carton, uh, Braxo cleaner and antifreeze bottles, a Mentats, Jet, Psycho, Buff Out, Stim Packs, Nuka Cola, and Whiskey. You probably wanna really keep an eye out for Buff Out since that can't be crafted. Rain fungus, hub flowers, carrots, tarberries, blood leaf, the Berserk syringe, uh, this is syringer ammo, and flamer fuel. Um, and the locations and places you can find these things, uh, farms, chem labs, service stations, sewers, marshlands, especially your tarberry and blood leaf. Side note here too. For the Berserk Syringe in the Syringer ammo category, we're not going to go over everything that the Syringer can do, but we would like to mention that, that the Berserk Syringe in particular is specific for making Fury. So if you want to make your character furious, keep an eye out for the components for the Berserk Syringe, which is uh, antifreeze bottles, bourbon, dirty water, and steel. And that's all you'll need to keep track of. We will cover the Syringer itself in a separate guide. <laughs> And now we move on to the healing chems. No addiction, no perks, no problem. There's always necessity for staying healthy in the waste. From stim packs to rat away, the value of these healing items needs little explanation. All of these have both no chance of addiction and no perk requirements to create. If you find yourself suffering a few too many withdrawal effects from aforementioned chems, you do well to keep a few refreshing beverages on hand. As for all the components you'll, you're going to be needing, it's going to be inside of turpentine, various glass bottles, and a life preserver. For straight up junk items that you'll need for crafting, that's that's not broken down for anything else. You could use blood sacks. For aid items, you'll need, of course, blood packs, irradiated blood, purified water, and stim packs. They can be used as a raw component sometimes. For plants, you need some glowing fungus and blood leaf. And for locations to find these things, hospitals are a pretty obvious one. Diners, wharfs, and marinas, and nuclear waste sites for the glowing fungus. When detailing and finding out what you need to make the best healing chems, keep an eye out specifically for blood packs, glowing fungus, and antiseptic. Those are the things you're going to probably need the most. Having access to a cooking station presents the opportunity to make incredibly beneficial meals for those long excursions out in the wasteland. While some of these recipes require additional ingredients, most food you can roast at the cooking station just require meat from wasteland creatures. A quick trip to camp can turn that bland radstag meat into a pack mule's food of choice. 
All right, so you have multiple categories in the cooking station. You have beverages to start with, which is a little limited, but you have the Dirty Wastelander, which requires moot fruit, Nuka Cola, and a little bit of extra whiskey. It raises your strength and charisma, but reduces your intelligence. As for the roasted things, there are many, many, many things you can roast at the cooking station, most of which just require the meat, as said before. But some of these actually require other ingredients, such as oil and razor grain and other such things. As for the soups, a little bit of extra ingredients required for that extra soupy consistency, I suppose. Some of them, like squirrel stew, can increase your experience rate by 2%, which doesn't seem like much, but it really does add up if you leave it, leave it going. Okay, for the, for the beverages roasting and soup components, you're going to want, obviously, the meat. And then you're also going to need wood and oil for some of the things. You'll need wood for the things that are quote-unquote on a stick, like the iguana on a stick or the squirrel on a stick. And you will also need oil for some things, like cooking oil that you can find in some kitchens and places. For other aid items besides the creature meats, you're going to want Nuka-Cola, whiskey, dirty water, blood pack, purified water, and vodka. For plants, you're probably going to need to have a little more variety because this is food. You're going to need moot fruit, razor grain, carrots, potatoes, gourd, silt bean, and blood leaf. And for the locations to find these things, mostly out in the wastes, you can find a lot of these plants just growing in the wild, and of course the creatures in the wild. But you can find a lot of these things in farms, bars and taverns, and also in hospitals. If you actually set up a bar in your settlements, you can actually purchase some of these things from your own vendor if you really wanted to. At the very least, this should get you on your way to creating potent chems, helpful healing items, and delicious snacks for your travels, all with great benefits. One last thing to note, when mixing food with chems, the effects will stack in most cases. If you want to run around as the best pack mule this side of the commonwealth, have some rad stag steak, and use some psycho buff and you'll be able to loot entire ruins without breaking stride. We hope that you found this guide entertaining, useful, or a little of both. If you enjoyed this video and want more, you know what to do. This is Kato Genesis, and I'll have Mr. G take us out. Hey folks, be cool to each other, help a brother or sister out, and see you out in the wastelands. Mr. G, out.